Yeah. So we're going to find the interval where the, this function is increasing and decreasing. And I'm going to talk about two ways to do it. The first way to do it is with your graphing calculator. You punch it in your graphing calculator. You use the um, calculate maximum button to find the maximum point. So your graph, when you graph it, is going to be something like this. Oh, that was a really bad picture. That's the graph, something like that. Let me see the picture. Someone got it there? All right, so your graph is like that and like that, something roughly. Actually, this line is more like here. So you need to find the points. You need to find that point, so find the max of that point and find the min of that point. I've got two different people telling me two different graphs. I think his is probably right. Yeah, there's no wrong with that. Yeah, so that's probably what you have. So you, so this right here, right here, whatever that x value is, point three, three, four, is it one, it's one third, you said? Yeah. Point 0.3 repeating? Yes. And whatever this x value is, find those two x values by using your calculate function on your calculator. And it's um, calculate min or calculate max. And then you have to... You have to do like a left bound, right bound, <coughs> and that's how you do it. Okay. And three, if you want to rock. Three, three, pretty two close to three. Yeah, two okay, so that's probably the answer. So where is it increasing? It's increasing from here. That whole that area right there is increasing because if you're going from left to right, you would be going up. So it's increasing from negative infinity to one third, that's one interval, and it's also increasing, increasing from there to there. To infinity. So, and three to infinity. And it's decreasing, I'll do this in a different color, it's decreasing right there. It's decreasing <coughs> from negative, or from one third to three. All right, so that's how you do it with your graphing calculator. Now, there's an easier way to do it, <coughs> excuse me, and it's called calculus. Do you need brackets? No, you want open brackets because you you, you don't uh, it it increases on an open interval typically. Okay, so you want open brackets. All right, so the other way to do this problem is called taking the derivative. And the taking the derivative of polynomial is easy. You drop that down. So this is called y dy dx or y prime sometimes or or f prime of x. 61. If this was called f of x, it'd be f prime of x. Anyway. We're calling it y prime, okay? And it's 3x, so I took that 3 down, and I reduced the exponent by 1. And then do the same thing. Take the 2 down, take that 2 down, multiply it. What is negative 5 times 2? 10x. Negative 10x, reduce the exponent by 1. So that's just x. This, there's a 1 here. Bring it down and multiply it. Reduce it by 1, which is just plus 3. That right there is the derivative, and if I set the derivative equal to zero, it will give me my two zeros of my function. And that's how you do that. So if I use a quadratic formula now on this, or if I factor it, it would be better if I could factor it, which I should be able to factor, right? It should be x um, minus 3 and 3x minus 1. How did I know that? Because you told me that my zeros were one third and three. X minus three. Does that work? Yep, it sure does. And so that's those are my two. That that's how you do it. You f and then you find your two zeros that way. And those zeros represent max and min points. And you'll understand why in calculus. But that's a shortcut way of doing it. If you can't use your calculator.